Sup, Chooms? How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, if you've ever watched TV, I'm sure you've seen this commercial at some point. Oh. 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 That is at least if you live in the United States or New Zealand, since I believe those are the only two nations on planet Earth where it is actually legal to advertise prescription drugs. So, what is Ozempic? Well, it is the trade name for semaglutide, which is a drug that was developed specifically for type 2 diabetes, and it is administered by injection once per week. It works by activating a hormone receptor called the GLP-1 receptor, and this receptor boosts the release of insulin, which helps control the blood sugar in people with diabetes. As you can see, the biochemistry is pretty complicated, but the net result is that this drug boosts your body's insulin secretion. So, because of this, it was found that this drug works really well for treating type 2 diabetes. You can see that here in this figure that shows the effect of the drug on what's called the hemoglobin A1C. Hemoglobin A1C is a type of hemoglobin that becomes high when your average blood sugar is high. Ozempic lowers the hemoglobin A1C considerably, which means the diabetes is under better control with this drug. However, in addition to its effects on blood sugar, it was also found that people taking Ozempic lost a good deal of weight, as you can see right here. In fact, the happy people having a barbecue in the Ozempic TV commercials even mentioned that they could lose a little bit of weight on the drug, which was pretty odd to me because usually the drug's side effects are read off quickly in a monotone during these types of commercials. But a side effect of weight loss is a side effect many people would find appealing, especially since people with type 2 diabetes are almost over always overweight. So, Ozempic is not officially approved by the FDA for the treatment of weight loss, but there is another product which uses the same drug, semaglutide, but at a higher dose that goes by the name of Wigovi, which actually is approved by the FDA for the treatment of weight loss. Also, there is another similar diabetes drug that also causes weight loss called Tirzepatide, also known as Monjaro. Here you see the percentage change in the body weight from taking Tirzepatide versus taking a placebo. This is all pretty remarkable. Remarkable. We're talking about losing almost a quarter of your body weight in a year and a half from just a drug. If there were ever an industry with more scams in it than the hair loss industry, it is definitely the weight loss industry, but unlike with the results with most diets, these results are definitely legitimate as you can see here. Over the short term of just a couple of months, the average weight loss was about 10%. So if you weighed 600 pounds like Jason Blaha, you'd lose on average 60 pounds in just two months, and in a year you'd lose at least 150 pounds on the highest dose. Other than bariatric surgery, that is probably the most effective weight loss intervention that is currently on the market. Not only that, but at least in the case of diabetes patients, it turns out that in the people who take Ozembic, the risk of cardiovascular problems like stroke and heart attacks goes down considerably, and this is probably just because of the weight loss, as obesity itself is, of course, a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. So, it's no wonder that Ozembic is getting a lot of press recently, and actually, the demand for the drug is so high that there is a current shortage of Ozempic across the globe. I have even heard that the drug company pulled some of their commercials because they can't meet the super high demand for the drug. Now, this is all great, of course, but this channel is called Hair Cafe, not Fat Cafe. So what does any of this have to do with hair loss? Well, unfortunately, based on some news reports from the media, it looks like Ozempic may have a very unfortunate side effect. Hair loss. At least that is what some people are reporting who have taken the drug for weight loss. If we turn to a slightly less reliable source like Reddit, we can see people complaining about hair loss from both Ozempic and Wagovi. So, is this a real problem that people using these drugs need to worry about, or is this just some delusional nocebo effect like post syndrome that is induced by online anecdotes? Hair loss isn't listed as a side effect in the Ozempic package insert, but if you look at the Wagovi package insert, it turns out that 3% of people on Wagovi reported hair loss versus 1% of people on placebo, so that is significant. And also remember, Wagovi is the same drug as Ozempic, just at a higher dose, so in theory you'd think that uh, Ozempic could cause the same side effects as Wagovi. Also, in the study of the other drug I mentioned, Tirzepatide, about 6% of people had hair loss versus 1% on placebo. It's a different drug, but it has the same effect on the body, so it's kind of like comparing finasteride and dutasteride where you could assume the side effect profile is similar. So, does increasing your insulin production cause hair loss? Is hair loss a real side effect of these type of drugs, or is there something else that is going on here? Well, this question was addressed in this article from the website Medscape. 
In the article, weight loss specialists weigh in on the causes of hair loss with Ozempic and other related drugs. These doctors feel that the hair loss is more related to the rapid loss of weight rather than from the drugs themselves, which makes sense since we know that rapidly losing weight by any method at all can sometimes be associated with hair loss. Things that can cause rapid weight loss, such as procedures like gastric bypass or gastric banding surgery, also known as lap band surgery, as well as other so-called bariatric surgeries, are also associated with hair loss. In this meta-analysis of hair loss after bariatric surgery, all the studies analyzed showed episodes of increased hair loss after surgery, and the average incidence of hair loss was in 57% of subjects after the specific kind of surgery. In looking at risk factors for hair loss after surgery, serum zinc, ferritin, and folic acid levels were lower in people with hair loss versus those without it, and young women were at the highest risk for hair loss. So, some of this hair loss could be due to severe nutritional deficiencies due to the inability to absorb nutrients after these kinds of surgeries. However, another likely factor here is just acute stress from the surgery itself and from the rapid weight loss which leads to catabolic stress. As a lot of you tunes know, severe stress can cause telogen effluvium, which is where hair in the telogen resting phase is abruptly shed. Normally, about 85% of your hair on your scalp is in the antigen growth phase, while the remaining 15% is in the telogen resting phase. There are different mechanisms of telogen effluvium, but in general, they tend to involve the premature conversion of the antigen growth hairs into the telogen resting phase hairs, which are then rapidly shed off the scalp. The causes of telogen effluvium are listed here. These causes include fevers from severe infections like malaria or tuberculosis, severe stress including emotional stress like loss of a loved one, injuries, major surgeries or starvation or crash dieting. There are also some drugs as well as nutritional deficiencies and endocrine abnormalities that can cause telogen effluvium. So the list is pretty large. But what doesn't cause telogen effluvium is just the regular day-to-day -day stress we all experience despite what some people claim. In order for stress to actually cause telogen effluvium, it has to be severe stress, like the type of stress would get from surgery or from extreme weight loss via crash dieting. The good news, though, is that telogen effluvium, unlike androgenic alopecia, is not a permanent condition. Once the stress is over, the hair will grow back normally since telogen effluvium, unlike androgenic alopecia, doesn't destroy the hair follicle. So most episodes of telogen effluvium will correct themselves within six months to a year. Since telogen effluvium is not androgenic, though, finasteride won't influence it, but a growth stimulant like topical minoxidil may help since it can prolong the antigen growth phase and accelerate regrowth. Well, getting back to the whole Ozempic thing as well as other related drugs, the incidence of hair loss seems to be a lot lower than with bariatric surgery since we're talking about a 3-6% to incidence of hair loss with these drugs versus over a 50% incidence with surgery. So, the doctors quoted in the Medscape article on Ozempic and hair loss feel that the hair loss from these drugs is most likely not directly related to the drugs, but instead it's related to the hair loss that is caused by telogen effluvium due to the rapid weight loss these drugs can cause rather than have anything to do with how these drugs work. Here's how one endocrinologist put it. Quote, it is rare, but we could see patients who have a period of diffuse hair loss called telogen effluvium or stress shedding with rapid weight loss, unquote. So, we don't have good research on what causes hair loss with these drugs, but it seems likely that what we're dealing with here is some telogen effluvium which has been documented to occur with rapid weight loss, as well as maybe some nutritional deficiencies. I don't think we know for sure whether these drugs can cause weight loss directly through other mechanisms, but it seems more likely this is an indirect effect of the drugs. In any case, it seems like this is probably just telogen effluvium, and this is a problem that corrects itself over time with or without using a growth stimulant like top topical minoxidil, even though topical minoxidil can probably help accelerate the process of healing. So I think these drugs are obviously a very big advance in the treatment of diabetes as well as in treating obesity, and it is of course very nice that these drugs are on the market due to the extremely detrimental effects obesity has on a person's physical and mental health. I really don't think the effects on hair is a big deal since we're not talking about androgenic alopecia, but due to the immense popularity of these drugs, I am certain that over time we'll get more data on this and not have to rely so much so on speculation. However, remember that hair loss occurring on these drugs is a relatively rare phenomenon. So you shouldn't just assume that if you are losing your hair while taking Ozempic that this is just telogen effluvium from rapid weight loss. Remember that androgenic alopecia remains by far the most common cause of hair loss, and unlike telogen effluvium, it is not going to simply reverse itself
itself with just the passage of time or through the use of a growth stimulant like minoxidil. In order to halt and even reverse androgenic alopecia, it is absolutely necessary to use a 5-AR blocking drug like finasteride or dutasteride. So if you're already on a 5-AR blocking drug and then you decide to start a drug like Ozempic or Wagovi in order to lose some weight, then you might see a slightly larger than expected shed from telogen effluvium, which is related to stress from rapid weight loss, but that should reverse itself over time. It is important to realize that telogen effluvium and androgenic alopecia, even though they both cause hair loss, they are still two totally separate problems and one does not cause the other to worsen the other. You can have telogen effluvium superimposed on androgenic alopecia, but that will be a temporary problem, whereas androgenic alopecia is a permanent problem that needs lifelong treatment through 5AR blockers. So the bottom line is, I don't think these weight loss drugs will cause any serious hair loss problems. The effects should be temporary, but like I said, it is also important to not assume that all hair loss while taking these drugs has to be caused by telogen effluvium. Androgenic alopecia is not caused by these drugs, we know that, but it can certainly be another cause of hair loss that is present coincidentally while taking these drugs. So, I hope all this puts into perspective some of the recent news reports on these drugs causing hair loss. So with that, I'll see you all next time, my fellow hair loss witchers. God bless.